I'm so excited. This is the last thing that I have to do this week before I'm done. I turn it off and we're, we're only halfway through the week. I am taking tomorrow off. I'm going to pack. And the next morning, I'm headed to Mexico for a week. Can I come? Um, you can, but unfortunately, you can't quit after this. You've got quite a few more things to pack into the next two days. I do. So after this, I have a buyer's appointment that's coming in at 530. Then I have a listing appointment at 7. And then I just got a call from one of our agents who um, was able to schedule uh, a listing appointment from an expired terminator that she got for making calls, which is her fourth one, which is amazing. Yeah. Shout out to Laura. You have been killing it with getting these appointments. We're just so proud of you. Yeah. So then I have that tomorrow morning at uh, 1030. Then I have a uh, buyer walk at 12. Then I have another buyer walk at two. And then I gotta go get my fresh haircut at three. Then I'm gonna get the IV drip so I can be hydrated. So I can lose hydration when I go to Cozumel, yeah. you know, and not feel too, too sick. So right. yeah. yeah, but I'm excited. Friday, go to Cozumel. You do a lot. You just had a one-on-one -on -one with um, Freddie um, you went on a listing appointment with Grecia. So, you know, it's expanded now. Whereas, you know, a lot of the things that we were doing were directly for the agents on the team. Now they're for the brokerage, which is amazing because I think that coming on board, it's different to hear what you're going to get or hear what the options are. But to truly then like make the move and be here, it's kind of mind blowing. That's the feedback that I've been getting them as far as oh my gosh, this has been life-changing. I know I was talking to Grecia the other day and she said, I didn't realize how much I would love having a transaction team to do all my paperwork. I have gained so much of my time back that I can now spend with my daughter. And I just thought that was the most precious thing. Yeah, well, and me just finishing up that one-on-one -on -one with Freddie, you know, the constant feedback from him is just how available we are to be able to sit down and have an hour long meeting about his business and where it's going, where he wants to take it. Just be able to just have that support. He feels really supported here. He feels like he's just getting a lot of things that he wasn't previously getting. Um, and it's great to to feel like we're fulfilling, you know, that obligation that we essentially said that we were going to fulfill for them. And so, so far, so good. Yeah. But uh, speaking of schedule and time constraints, I mean, you've really just been busting it the past few weeks in all aspects. Um, yesterday was a full day as well. You came home and, and shared a pretty cool story with me as far as a lead came into the phone. You don't, he does a lot. He does a lot. The one thing he does not do really is answer the phone unless it's forwarded to his cell phone. And you happen to pick up the call this time and take the lead. Yeah. Well, it's funny that it kind of worked out that way. Um, you know, we had the um, session on Monday where we were talking to the agents that were there about how you you know ask the right questions to prospects, whether it's someone coming into your open house or whether it's a phone call that you're getting on a home that someone's interested in. And then we also had talked about in that session about how you really establish credibility and value so that people want to work with you and that you stand out, you make them feel like you're a different type of agent. And so, you know, I, I put my, uh, my talking to action you took your own advice i did yeah and yeah no so had someone that called in and they were inquiring on a builder listing and you know had questions and so like i always tell the agents you know always make sure that you answer those questions that they're you know asking of the home in particular but then make sure you have your own set of questions you know because otherwise what most people are used to doing is answering the questions not being prepared to you know ask their own and all of a sudden the clients okay thanks for the information and end of call, right? So as I answered those questions for them, I started asking my own questions. And so the first question I asked them was, you know, what in particular about this home caught your interest? And the reason I like asking that question is because that question gives you a lot of information. It helps you understand the specifics, right? Whether it's something about that home, whether it's the neighborhood specifically that brought, you know, attention to it, uh, whether it's the schools. Um, so that always gives me the information I'm looking for. Then I asked my second question, which is, you know, what's your current living situation? Uh, their situation was that they're currently renting a home. Their lease is coming due in 60 days. Um, then I asked my third question, which is, you know, what's been so far your experience in being in the market? That's very telling as well, because you get to understand if they made offers on homes, which they have. So 
based on that, I knew that they had an agent. Um, and then asked them, what's their timeline? And they said pretty much as soon as they're able to find a home. Uh, and then the last question was whether they were pre-approved or they were going to be paying cash for the home. And in this case, they were pre-approved. So then from there, you know, I just kind of get into the more specifics of, you know, um, telling them about who we are as a company, uh, the benefits of working with us. Uh, at one point in time, as I was going through some of those questions before I got to kind of putting it all together, they had told me that they had an agent, which obviously I already knew based on the questions that I'd asked and the fact that they had put in an offer. But what I always tell people is that, you know, it's okay. There's so many people that are out there that are work with agents. That doesn't mean that they're tied to that agent. You know, if you're able to establish a lot of, you know, credibility and value and they see you as the expert and you show them things that maybe the agents that they had been working with hasn't shown them, then they may choose to work with you. And I think that that's fine. And it's, you know, something that we do very often. Sorry, that was really long winded and I didn't know where to go from there. <laughs> go. <laughs> well, didn't you say you wanted me to like go through? No, that was perfect. That was perfect. Which by the way, if you weren't catching those questions, you need to watch that back and you need to pause and write down those questions because those questions are gold. I mean, for the agents on our team, as you mentioned Monday when we did that speaking engagement and we opened it up to all agents throughout the Houston area when they came here and they heard those questions, like their minds were blown. And so, um, you know, as you always say, it's about creating, oh crap. It's about creating credibility and value, right? right? And that's what you do with those questions. And that's what you do when you then ask your own set of questions and just kind of like take that conversation to the next level. And now you no longer sound the same you no longer look the same as every other real estate agent that they've talked to up to that point. They're like, wow, this person is different. And it's funny because you share this story in that, you know, you were going through and asking all of your questions and cre creating value for them. Um, but you did all of that first before setting the appointment. And um, Jared, had a similar experience in his open house last weekend where somebody came through his open house last minute and they had been referred three other real estate agents by a builder. Um, but they were very upfront with Jared and they said, you know, we just, we were very turned off because we called the number and this is our first time buying a home. Like we have a lot of questions and they didn't want, they didn't, want to answer our questions. They didn't ask us any questions. They were just trying to get us to come into the office and set the appointment. And we were very turned off by that. You know, it's so having this stance where you ask the right questions, provide the value, and you're building all that rapport is when you get the appointment. Just like a recent video I did about getting people to sign into your open house. You know, it's not the first question that you ask when people walk through the front door is, can I get you to sign in? Why? Like, why? Just so you could have their contact information, just so you could have, you know, record of who for the seller who came through. You're going to get that. You will get that. You're going to get everybody to sign in, but that's not how you're going to go about doing it. You're going to allow them to come in as they're touring the home. You're going to ask the right questions. You're going to provide credibility and value. And then once you've done that and you've explained to them how it is that you work, how you've helped others become successful, then at that point, you're no longer asking them to sign in. You're literally at that point exchanging contact information because they found the value in that what you can provide them in their real estate experience. And it's not just a cold like, let me get you to sign in. Yeah. Well, and the reason that you asked those questions, the ones in particular that I mentioned is it's, it's fact finding. It's being able to understand exactly where they're at in their journey so that you can tie it all back in together, right? So with these particular people, um, you know, they're they're renting. And so as I'm explaining to them who the Nicole Free Group is, how long we've been in business, uh, how many families we've helped, um, our experience, understanding how to run comparables, how to negotiate, um, how the ultimate goal is in their buying experience, saving them as much money as possible. Um, the differences between working with an outside lender, which they have, 
uh, on a new construction home versus working with the builder's lender and the additional incentives, and then being able to say, and then we also have you know a lease buyout program where we can help you in buying them out of their lease. And so you're explaining all these things based on the information that you found out. And when you establish that credibility by explaining to them who you are and the difference in working with you versus working with another agent, their eyes just kind of get open to the possibilities of, man, like there's something that may be better that's out there because they had no clue about many of the things that we were talking about. So that's why it was really easy at the very end to just set the appointment. Well, and weren't they looking you up while you guys were on the phone together? Yes, they were. Yeah. yeah. Well, and part of that was because I told them to look us up. I think it's important for you know people to do their due diligence on the agents that, that, are, that are out there so that they can see what the difference is. And for us, one of the biggest things is the ratings and reviews that we have out there, uh, the quality of our website. So as I told her to look us up, she literally was looking us up while I was talking to her. Right. Which, you know, again, just another reason why, especially for brand new agents, it's so par- uh, important who you're partnering with, whether it's the brokerage or team or whatever, because you don't have the ability to, you know, show all this production or sh- show all your ratings and reviews yet, because maybe you're just getting up and going, but by partnering with a brokerage that you can, you know, um, use their numbers or a team where you can use their numbers, then it gives kind of a leg to stand on, you know? And I just, sometimes I'm scrolling my feed and I just see these brand new agents just trying so hard to sell themselves. Um, and it's like, you're not there yet. Like you got to crawl before you walk and you have to align yourself um, and be able to leverage the successes of other people uh, to be able to kind of like get your wheels going. But yeah. you don't have to do that. I mean, you're clearly very experienced. Well, I mean, but honestly, even for those agents that are new and just kind of starting out, there's always a way to make yourself stand out and and to build credibility and value. And that may look different than what mine is, right? Like you're not maybe you're going to be able to say that you helped this many families last year. You know, maybe what you say is that because, you know, you don't have, you know, a ton of sales that you have more time to be able to spend with that client. You're, you're able to, you know, do a lot more due diligence for them. You're able you know, it's, it's like kind of whatever you want to make it. Like you can cater that credibility value add however you need to. You are so true in that statement. And I'm smiling because like, as I'm listening to you say this, I'm having a flashback. And you remember when I was a solo agent and I would be going into these listing appointments and you know the the person on the other side of the table would talk about how they were interviewing so and so team and I would sell against teams all the time I'm like you don't want to work with a real estate team they're so busy they don't have time for you <laughs> Um, you know, and then you start a team and you're like, let me tell you how working with the team is so much better than working with an individual agent. But the point in that is it's true. You just take whatever you have, whatever um, kind of your um, highlights are, and you present that before the person. Um, and really, at the end of the day, it's taking the time and the effort to do that. That already sets you so far apart and gets you so far ahead because so many are unwilling to do that. Yeah, and the biggest thing is that you're spending, you're spending time in doing open houses or you know making calls, and you don't get a ton of opportunities, right? Especially in a marketplace like today, where you know things are you know a little slower. So each opportunity really counts, and you need to make sure that you're spending that time with that client to understand what their need is. That you're taking time to explain, you know, what your credibility and value is, so that gives you the best opportunity to capture that client. And don't be concerned about being too aggressive. Um, You know, it's funny how many times I have had clients say that the reason they went with us was because we were aggressive. And that's what they want in someone who they're working with. They want someone who is going to fight for them, whether it's selling their home, whether it's helping them buy a home. And so don't be concerned about, you know, being too aggressive. People, People want you to lead them as a professional and for you to stand out as such. And for you not to essentially ask them what they want, you be the leader essentially in that transaction. I agree. I agree. All good things. Well, uh, before we wrap up, can I just go ahead and publicly wish you a very happy birthday? You can. When are you throwing me a party? Well, uh, you know, we got to look at the schedule because we're going to be in Mexico during your birthday. So 
I think it's going to be uh, a lot of celebrating your birthday. I don't think we have to look for an excuse to throw a party. Didn't you say you wanted to do 10 shots in the Houston airport on our way out? I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. So I, I what I said was 10 shots at the Houston airport, 10 shots at the Cozumel airport, because I'm turning 46 this year. So I need to at least have 46 shots. Oh my gosh. No, I'm out. Not, not in one day, but at least while I'm on the trip. I'm out. I'm out. Well, thank you for allowing me to come along with you to Mexico to celebrate your birthday. You're welcome. Happy birthday. Thank you. I love you. I love you. All right. Will you go ahead and finish out the rest of your week then, the rest of your work week, and I'm going to go get ready for Mexico.